At first sight, it's hard to tell who of these young people is American and who is Russian. The students of the Worcester Polytechnic Institute and the Financial University under the government of the Russian Federation are together defending their project that they worked on together at the International Finance Department. I think everyone's a little bit nervous, definitely. Um, but we've practiced this, we've, we've got this under control, we've gotten feedback from the audience before. Uh, I think we're, we're very prepared and that preparation, for at least for me, it's very comforting. So a little bit nervous, but I think we got this. The group worked on a socially minded project. They studied the living conditions of the elderly in pension homes. Some may say, why do Americans need it? They all had a choice where to go. London, Zurich, Hong Kong, but they chose Russia. They were interested from the get-go. Our country is interesting to them, not just because of Pushkin and Dostoevsky, but also due to current challenges. The charity fund, Dolgoletia, offered the students an idea to research pension houses for the elderly, and the fund then became a partner of the project. The Russian-American team tried to figure out how to increase the quality of life of the elderly who have been placed into pension homes for rehabilitation after a long illness or for the simple reason to have a trained staff help the elderly with day-to-day -day chores. We showed the students the importance of the social problems that exist in our country and that it has to be solved. Usually, these issues are out of sight of the main media outlets. I'd say these issues are simply ignored. The American guests, despite all the issues in the U.S.-Russia relationships at the moment, were showed everything they needed to explore. Nothing was hidden from their view. Towards the end of their trip, the Americans collected lots of material. The students worked at a senior center supported by the charity fund Dolgoletia, and that's how the young people ended up in Belozerki, a region not far from Moscow. The home for the elderly is located in the Klin region, surrounded by forests with lots of fresh air. That is, of course, a plus. But the guests want to find out what else the elderly do here and how they spend their time. Hello. Hello. A meeting takes place in the living room. New people come here very rarely, so all the elderly are very curious to find out who came to visit this time. After seeing nice young faces, they got excited. And the traditional game, I was born a gardener, a memory training game, takes an unexpected turn. Peon. Peon. Me. Oh. What's wrong? Don't say. In love? Who with? There she is. <laughs> Yevgeny Ivanovich nodded either to the American Naomi or to the Mongol Angarag and made everyone laugh. The elderly were asked to fill out a form, but it soon became clear that questions like how do you evaluate your independence are too hard for people with dementia. It definitely helps us because, okay, so when we visited the home in Moscow, we um, we noticed that a lot of them weren't able to fill out the surveys that we um, that we gave out to them. Um, but when we came here, a lot of a lot more of them were capable of doing so. So it, it supported um, this new focus that we had of not focusing on improving the programming, but more focusing on um, again getting volunteers and just making people more aware that these homes actually help the elderly instead of just um, putting them in here um, for nothing. New surprises awaited for Oliver, and they helped him find the right approach. In any case, how right the approach really is, we will soon find out when he presents his project. It's the sixth year in a row that students from WPI visit the Financial University in Russia. They are separated into three teams each, of which has Russian students added into these groups and are thrown to develop various projects. There are only 12 internship spots in Russia available to WPI students to fill. I have to select them. I can't have them all come. The number of spots is limited. And the reason for this interest in participating in the Moscow Project Center is that students talk to other students, the ones who interned in the previous years, and find out how great the experience has been in Russia. And now I would like to give a word to the second research Group. The title of the project sounds fantastic, connected in golden years. 
The goal of the project appears on the screen, to rehabilitate the image of private senior centers. Why do the students set this goal for themselves? Really just informing the public about different aspects of the home would be a great way to try and change public opinion because I think a lot of people have these negative views about putting people in nursing homes uh, that aren't necessarily true. We did some research and found out that people believe that senior centers are places where the elderly go to spend the last few years of their lives. In other words, it is not a good prospect and the perception is that people don't live here very well. Oliver comments the diagram on screen. Nine out of ten respondents have never been in elder centers in Russia. And yet, for the most part, they tend to see them in a negative light. But here, in Dolgaletia, the students saw how the life of the elderly can be changed for the better. This senior center usually houses the elderly with serious illnesses and problems. Some have heart issues, others mental disorders like dementia. Many are here to rehabilitate after strokes or heart attacks. These elderly need constant attention and care. Each staff member knows that rooms have to be tidy and cozy. The special medical beds have to work perfectly. The bathrooms and showers have to be immaculate. The nurses here almost never sit. There is always a grandpa or grandma who needs assistance. However, the life of the elderly here is quite active. They can join different clubs, engage in activities and various TV programs to watch, as well as take walks in the fresh air and celebrate different festivals to keep them busy. Also, the food here is delicious and healthy. Doctors are here to check up on the elderly. Hello, the doctor is here to check on you. What a good looking guy. Good day, how are you? The director of the charity fund Dolgoletia, Yelena Kuznetsova, takes a sweet old woman to see the doctor. This checkup is free of charge and offered by the neighboring Innovation Center for Vessel Research in Belozerki. This way, the elderly with heart problems are looked after by cardiologists. After the doctor was finished with his call, he left the room and was immediately surrounded by Americans. They asked about how medical treatment and help is organized in Russia and how it deals with the elderly in particular. By the way, a doctor is always on call in the senior center, and if needed, he will send for an ambulance. Wake up. One shoulder forward, the other back. Different programs for dealing with post-heart attack issues, strokes and heavy injuries result in 40% recovery of the elderly at Dolgoletia, who get back up on their feet and continue to lead a regular lifestyle. During the presentation of his project, Sergei Gladkov makes a point about the effective rehabilitation that takes place in this home for the elderly. The nurses patiently help those who have injuries. This is how, after a serious injury, the 90 years old Alexander Mananikov got back on his own feet. I forgot how to greet in their Hello. language. Hello. Good morning. Hello. A World War II veteran meets the guests. He needs some help standing, but his handshake is as firm as ever. Good, guys. Healthy. Great. The Americans find out that Alexander Pavlovich used to be a war pilot and they ask what planes he flew. The answer, a bomber. I flew across the North Pole with an atomic bomb, yes. But the veteran preferred not to talk about the Cold War experiences anymore. I love America, good people, good country. Not on old man, no. This doesn't feel like an old man. That's <laughs> strong An important observation the students made is that the pension house makes life easier not only for the elderly but also for their loved ones. Of course, it's very difficult after long working day to communicate with their elder people, to interact with them. And in that case, the main thing which nursing houses can provide better than family is communication. This gives relatives the freedom to continue living their social life, to get things done, and not get bogged down with taking care of the elderly. This issue is very important for the government, because in our country, many people can't live to the full extent, can't work, because they are busy taking care of the elderly. And the students have noticed this, and I believe that this is already progress. 
While working at the senior center, the Americans were curious, how do people who are over 80 have fun? Reading, talking, obviously. But also volunteers come here with concerts, like these kids from a school in Himki. They sure impress the elderly with their talent. And on holidays, everyone dances. But the safety of the elderly always comes first. The fire alarm system here is cutting edge. The Americans had a detailed lecture about it. Jack Chase carefully watched how the staff worked and was impressed by their dedication. I certainly noticed that some of the residents became confused as we talked to them and they began to repeat themselves or halfway through the conversation they would forget what they just were talking about and you would kind of go back to square one in terms of your topic and so I can see how that can be very taxing especially if you're trying to address a difficult emotional issue and the conversation never really progressing so I can see after extended exposure this could be very mentally exhaustive to staff and administrators. Devin Hainsworth knows what he's talking about. His grandfather lives in an expensive pension home back in the US. The general atmosphere is very similar to what I would consider a top-end American assisted living facility. So I'd say obviously where he lives it's a bit bigger, but it's similar, it's in the suburbs, it's not in an urban area, it's similar to this place. Um, and yeah, just the overall, the friendliness of the staff, the atmosphere, it's very much the same. During his presentation, Devin is not so much worried about the quality of care, but rather the social isolation. And Garag agrees with Devin. For their convenience, we ask them to scale from one to five their answers, and most of the answers we got were from four to five. We should also mention that the elderly were very happy with our visits. We made their days, and they were happy to talk to us to see new faces. Here, Angarag talked to an elderly who visited Mongolia, where Angarag is originally from. The elderly resident, as it turned out, was in quite a lot of places. Would you like to move to America? America? I don't know. I guess I could. Russia is better. That's right, darling, it is better. The students were pleased to find out that it's never too late to dream and make plans. What are your plans for the next 22 years? Get married. <laughs> There's my beauty. And at the other end of the living room, an elderly resident is having an interesting discussion with Naomi and Devon. Angarag, who speaks Russian with almost no accent, translates. In a few moments, everyone listens to the songs coming out of the phone. Almost all Russians know that voice. This is Vladimir Vysotsky. <laughs> Uh, and we also learned about um, his favorite music, and uh, I found it on my phone and played it for him. The more they talk, the more familiar they get. Here's an old lady telling the American students about her long life, and it looks like they're very interested. What are your kids doing? Are they working? Yes, yes. Both of them are currently working. They have such diverse and varied uh, stories and experiences, and people who've lived an entire lifetime have so many things to teach you. Every single person in here has done so much, but they still have the mindset that going forward, they're, they're not done doing things, and they still plan on, on accomplishing more, and that they aren't done living, and that they really, in some sense, have just begun. The authors of this project created a website where detailed information can be found about the elderly living in this center and what their needs are. The site is created to attract sponsors and volunteers to visit and contribute to the senior facility. To maintain a decent quality of life, the charity fund Dolgoletia needs donations to buy necessary supplies, to maintain the infrastructure, to purchase wheelchairs and medical beds and other necessary appliances. Here they have plans to make a summer terrace and to plant some flowers. And also, some elderly here have no one to pay for them, so the fund pays their fee for them. I've been living here for two years now, and I don't even want to go back home. I'm so used to this place. They're like my siblings here. 
A lot of rings shine on her fingers, but she can't afford to live here. Her son brought her here. At first, he visited her and paid on time. And then her son disappeared. We try to help her as we can. Manage to find some nice clothes for her. Even some bracelets, rings and earrings, just as she likes it. Ludmila Sergeyevna gets another blouse and bracelet from the attendant. She believes that she is very fortunate that she has a place to stay, thanks to the charity fund Dolgoletia, that is constantly looking for donations for people like her. And she's not the only elder in this situation. We have lots of old people who can't pay for themselves, but they too have a right to lead a normal life. The American students pointed out that the public should be aware and take action. Social media should be used so that people who want to help could contribute. I think they gave us valuable advice on new ways to find sponsors and donations to help make life of the elderly in senior centers in Russia better. Thank you very much. The social project presented by a Russian-American team got very high marks. The Dolgoletia Fund is ready for more student ideas. The students are very brave because I can say when I worked for charity funds, I was always scared, always wondering, will I fail or will I succeed? But they just went on and did it. They got great results. I hope that our work will continue and we will continue to work harder and achieve even greater results. <laughs> Professor Ilinsky verified the collaboration between Moscow and WPI will continue for years to come and more students will visit and continue the work that has been done already. Over 150 American students have taken part in this project. They worked in different cities, and over the whole course of this collaborative program, we've had no problems with the American students. And the Worcester Polytechnic Institute has given all the Russian students who have participated in this project, including the staff at Dolgoletia, a diploma. The internship is over. It's time for the Americans to return home. They all made new friends here in Russia, as well as learned something valuable. And now they are a bit more cognizant of the elderly. I feel like we've really gotten a lot done, and I think future years can build off of our work and hopefully improve uh, these homes even more. The most difficult thing studying here was probably communicating with people. You know, we set up a plan, um, and then oftentimes we had to change the plan due to language barriers. But our Russian students were very helpful in helping us out with the translations and everything. I'm happy to say that we all became really close friends. And if there's a chance for them to come to Russia again, or for us to visit America, I'm sure that everyone will be happy. We enjoyed working together a great deal, and we plan on working together in the near future. All this immersion into Russian culture, Russian life, washed away the political differences that some might have had. Politics is completely forgotten, and I think that after this project, when it's time to say goodbye, many tears will be spilled. Are you ready? Yes, I'm shooting. The Russian charity fund Dogoletia helps the elderly. Their golden years and affected by severe illnesses and traumas. If you would like to help, please send any sum to the account indicated below. Your donations will be used for purchasing wheelchairs, medical beds, medical appliances, purchasing prosthetic limbs for veterans, purchasing everyday products such as diapers, bed sheets, hygiene products, helping pay the rent, paying for the upkeep and the maintenance of the buildings and the territory.